The most common questions I get asked when people find out I own a boat is, do you have to paint it every year? And do you have to take it out of the water every year? I've always found that an oddly technical pair of questions, given the squilly and other options that a non-boater could ask me, but it's been a consistent enough inquiry over the years for me to finally get around to making a video about it. Most leisure vessels do get lifted out every year, and many of those are kept ashore during the winter. But wintering ashore is a choice, and so just as many owners keep their vessels in the water, either in a slightly decommissioned state or kept ready to use throughout the winter to enjoy the peace and quiet of the off-season. If you want to know more about wintering a boat, I made a video about it when we wintered Confidence last year. The main reason for annual lift-out is to clean and inspect the underwater part of the boat and apply a coat of protective paint to keep the weeds off. Biological fouling is the accumulation of microorganisms, plants, algae or small animals on your underwater surfaces. This fouling can occur almost anywhere water is present and at best it can slow your boat down, cause decreased fuel efficiency and reduce the flow through water intakes. But at worst, it can damage your hull. The normal method of keeping your hull cleaned is by using paint that contains a biocide to prevent growth in the first place. But these biocides are typically only effective for around a year, so at some point every season you need to get her out of the water, clean off the mess and apply a fresh coat of paint. Now there are a few options for gaining access to the underwater surfaces of your boat. The traditional method of careening, which basically means parking around some hard sand and letting the tide go out, is certainly the cheapest, but comes with its own set of risks. In the Solent, there are several maintenance piles or scrubbing grids, allowing the boat to be propped up safely whilst gaining access to the underwater area. The cost is minimal, but the environmental regulations are substantial and there's no use of pressure washers allowed, so cleaning your hull is by manual labour alone and of course you only have a few hours to complete all your tasks before the tide comes back in. The most common method of hauling out is the lift out and block off at the marina boatyard. Methods can vary from a mobile crane hired in for the day to lift vessels moored at the dock wall to a dedicated travel hoist facility. These use impressive machines to efficiently pluck boats from a purpose-built lifting berth. The boat is held in slings whilst a powerful pressure washer is used to clean your hull of the slime and weed, and then the boat hoist moves the vessel around the yard to a suitable position for storage ashore. Once your final resting place is negotiated with the yard to ensure you have reasonable access to both power and water points, the boat will be blocked off using traditional wooden piles, or a dedicated metal cradle, or commonly a mix of both. Another method of getting access to your hull that we can use in the Solent area is the sea lift facility at Boat Folks Hasler Marina inside Portsmouth Harbour. Here you sail your vessel into a floating docking facility. The vessel is secured in place by the sea lift team and then when everything's ready they blow air into the dock and it rises out of the water until your hull is standing on the now dry platform. This whole process takes less than half an hour whereupon the pressure wash off and anti-fouling can take place. It's a quick turnaround and you're usually anti-fouled in the afternoon and then sunk back into the water the following morning. So you only get time for one coat and the paint isn't really allowed the desired amount of drying time before immersion. This can reduce the longevity of the biocide by a couple of months, but you still get a chance to change your anodes and grease your seacocks, so as a pit stop it's a very viable option when a long stay ashore doesn't fit in with your cruising plans. Once you're out of the water and the boat's cleaned and dried, it's time to inspect the hull prior to painting. Um, so when you've got, um, when, you, when you're painting anti-foul onto anti-foul, like we're going to do with a fiberglass, you can pretty much go straight on last year's coat if it's in good condition, and this one's in really good condition, better than I thought it was going to be. On the, the, hull, the keel, however, which is this, the steel, the iron bit, it's quite a lot of pitting and it's coming away a little. So what we're going to have to do with this one is we'll have to put a barrier coat on. Um, a primer. Um, we can't paint anti fouling straight onto this. We're going to use International uh, Primacon, which is a below waterline primer for anti fouling. And um, it goes onto any substrate, so it's the ideal thing to do. Be careful when sanding or grinding off old coatings, as you may well contravene the safety regulations of the boatyard you're in. Firstly, because you need to make sure the minimum of mess is caused so you don't dirty your neighbour's boat 
but mainly because the dust is toxic to both you and the environment, so it's vitally important that it doesn't enter the water. Once you've prepared, and if necessary primed as well, it's time to consider your anti-fouling paint. To say there's a fair choice would be something of an understatement. There are several manufacturers and most of those produce several lines. Very generally speaking though, there are two main types of anti-fouling paint. Ablative or self-eroding anti-fouling or hard anti-fouling. For slow moving boats like sailing yachts, the self-eroding type is normally the skipper's choice. Manufacturers might produce a few different strengths for use in different places and most yachting magazines will put test patches in the water so they can write up a decent article every couple of years comparing the performance of a range of paints in different geographical areas. Ablative paint is a bit like a bar of soap. As the water passes over it, the outer layer gets washed off, revealing fresh biocide underneath. Most products are designed to have enough biocide for two coats applied at the beginning of the season to last an entire year, but of course that depends on so many variables, including several you're not in control of, like the amount of sunlight and the amount of nutrients in the water. For boats that travel at speeds above 15 knots or so, that softer anti-fouling might well get washed away a little too quickly to last a full season, so the hard anti-fouling is recommended. For a sense of completion, it's worth mentioning there are an increasing number of alternatives being developed. This is a good thing as painted biocidal coatings are not good for the environment. There are long life coatings like copper coat, which has been around for a good while and can last up to 10 years. There's a product designed to mimic the surface of seashells which don't suffer from algal growth. And there's a silicon based coating which is deemed to be too slippery for microorganisms to adhere to. But whatever you choose, you pays your money and you takes your choice. So every, uh, every fouling area is slightly different and every anti-fouling, um, self-eroding anti-foulings these are, um, every one of those is slightly different too. I've settled on CJ Shogun 33, it's proven to be the best uh, anti-fouling for the areas that I sail in, uh, so it's not the best necessarily just because it's the best for the areas I sail in um, and we've, we've proven that by having it, uh, this will be the third year running on this boat. And we are following in tradition by having a different colour um, on this year that we had last year, so it's uh, black this year. Obviously we're all uh, safety clothinged up, got eyeballs, got old, old clothes on, uh, this stuff is nasty. The thinners uh, is not to clean it off your skin, that'll burn your skin. So first job then is to give it a good stir, get all the solids out of the bottom and just apply evenly with a roller. Day two, and you can see we put a coat on, which is good. Um, and now we're going to do the second coat, um, and we're going to concentrate on certain areas. So, around the waterline area, we need to put some. Uh, we need is, is where it's thickest. Uh, underwater, deep down, where there's not a lot of sunlight, um, we can get away with putting a relatively light coat on there. So, what the idea is is, so we don't run out, we'll put it on high to start, and then we'll work our way down. We did it the opposite way on the way up. Um, and uh, we'll thin the paint uh, suitably as well using the thinners, but it's anti-fouling thinners. It's number three, or if you're using CJ, it's A anti-fouling. And then the prop, um, we can't use uh, soft uh, self-eroding anti-fouling uh, on the prop. It spins too fast uh, and it'll just basically wear it away too quickly. So we're gonna use a different kind of anti-foul on the prop. It'll be a spray. But I've put this rag on here to protect the electrical surfaces so that when the anode's on it's got a good electrical connection. You don't want to get any paint on there, otherwise the anode won't work very well. So that's it, we are done uh, with 
done everything we need to do. She's ready to go back in the water with the one exception, one final job, and it's the best one of the lot.